We have learned uh, a lot about the officer, but we are waiting for Milwaukee police to release the name and more information. But I can tell you that uh, earlier today in a news conference with assistant uh, Brunson, he mentioned that this officer was well loved within his unit. He worked with the tactical enforcement unit. This is seen video from earlier this morning again where that tragic incident happened again on the south side uh, in District 6 where a number of officers were serving a search warrant on the home you see right there with officers going in and out. It is at that time that Assistant Chief Brunson tells us that the officers were met by two suspects and shooting began. One officer shot immediately taken from the scene to Freighter Hospital where he later died of his injuries. Again, let's hear in to Chief Assist uh, Chief Assistant Chief Brunson, excuse me, as he speaks about that officer earlier today. And this is with great sadness that we sit here today, as the mayor said, in eight months, this is the third line of duty death that we've had here in our city. This officer was well loved by everyone on the department and was obviously a part of a tight knit unit, the tactical enforcement unit, it's highly trained and we are deeply impacted by this loss for our agency. We're asking for prayers and your support from all of our city residents during this extremely difficult time for us. For the Milwaukee Police Department and the community as well, Mayor Barrett was at that news conference talking about that he is grieving for the family and for the police department, but also angry at uh, the choice made by this 26 year old suspect who is now in custody. We are told the investigation remains fluid, but this is a situation that began uh, early this morning around nine o'clock on Milwaukee South Side where Milwaukee police were executing a search warrant when it turned tragic and deadly for that Milwaukee police officer. What you are seeing here and what we are waiting to happen is going to be a procession uh, involving the Milwaukee Police Department and perhaps other law enforcement agencies throughout the county to bring the body of this fallen officer from the location at Freighter Hospital down to the medical examiner's office. And in fact, if we have a chance to switch to some of the places along the route, because a huge American flag now flies at 9th and State. You can see it there. That was put up an hour or two ago, and we expect that this procession will go through this location as well as they make their way from freighted all the way to downtown Milwaukee. And we're expecting that that procession will begin any minute now. But again, as you said, Charles, there are a number of law enforcement agencies, including first responders like this one you see here along the procession route, waiting for that officer's hearse to come through. These are firefighters, and as you can see, they are waiting at attention for this procession to start. This is just another sign of how this community of first responders and police officers come together in the time of need. If we can switch to another camera, it would be awesome. So we can again just show you perspective of what we're looking at and what we can expect to see as this procession goes. Here is a shot of just again those cars preparing to line up and escort that officer to his next destination. Common Council President Ashante Hamilton has been involved and up to speed, uh, keeping uh, getting briefed on the situation that happened today. And I know uh, Ashanti Hamilton joins us now live on the phone. Uh, Common Council President Hamilton, thank you very much for making time for us. Um, what have you been able to observe today as we now watch and prepare for this procession to go from Freighter Hospital to the medical examiner's office? Well, primarily, um, it is it, it's really a sense of loss mm -hmm. um, with, the, with the law enforcement community, with the residents across the city, um, as people are getting wind of of what happened earlier today, um, the coming together of the community around uh, around the law enforcement uh, community uh, is something uh, that I'm, I'm proud of to see happen in the city of Milwaukee. Um, but it's really a sad day to have one of our own, um, uh, you know, meet this type of man uh, again in such a short time period in the city of Milwaukee. President Hamilton, we are not naming the officer, and I know you'll respect that as well. As we look at uh, the challenges that the Milwaukee Police Department faces, as you mentioned here, this is the third officer 
uh, who has died in the line of duty in less than eight months. Uh, challenging with the loss of just one officer and now three. And then you look at the type of work that they are doing to try to protect and serve our community. When you look at that and the challenges facing this p police chief, how do you think they go forward? Well, one of the things that I think is really important for us to do is to continue to give them the level of support um, that they need and deserve. Um, in the in the very challenging work that they're doing in, in neighborhoods throughout the city. Uh, it's extremely important for us to, to understand the, the dangerous nature of the work. Um, and unfortunately, these types of incidences, uh, they, they remind us of what, what these officers are putting on the line every single day that they go out, which may seem like a routine day. Um, but they're putting their lives on the line you're absolutely um, every yeah. single day you, you you're absolutely right and i also because i know i've been uh playing phone tag with you and texting you as well you are at another event today for safe and sound where officers are recognized for the work they are right. doing in community yet in the backdrop you knew this was going on as well a loss of right. life yet also looking at those who are trying to make a difference in that community in our community were you struck by that, the contrast of that? It, it was a very somber room. and uh, But one of the things that you did feel uh, standing in there and talking to residents and the, and the officers that work with them day in and day out was a strong sense of resilience, um, that they are not going to give up. They are not going to let officers who fall in the line of duty uh, fall in vain, uh, that they are going to be resolute. Uh, and continuing to try to make Milwaukee uh, a safe place to live. And it, it's in these moments, if, if there's to be a silver lining in all of this, it is the recognition that people are not going to give up, um, and they're going to continue to fight to make their communities safer. Uh, and that was very evident today in that event. Um, and I think we're seeing it now, even as uh, the community is preparing for this procession, um, you know, that there's going to be and overwhelming support for law enforcement um, and their efforts to try to uh, make our communities what they should be. And uh, um, President Hamilton, I know you don't have the chance of seeing some of the video, but we do know as this procession begins, we are seeing officers who are lining sidewalks. We are seeing neighbors getting out of their cars and out of their houses mm -hmm. to show this support. And um, it, we all know how difficult of a job this is, but it has to be heartwarming to the people in law enforcement to know that the community stands with them? A visual. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's extremely important to do this. Um, you know, th these, th under any circumstances, this, this would be a tough loss. Um, but, to, but, to, but to have this happen uh, while you're in the line of duty, um, doing the type of work that they do, it's extremely important um, to have this, this show of support um, and at, the, at a time when, uh, you know, everybody feels affected by it, uh, we, sh we, we really should uh, have these displays of support. President Hamilton, I know that you have other responsibilities today, so we thank you for making time for us. That is Milwaukee Alderman and President of the Common Council, Ashante Hamilton. We will check back right, with you, you later. Thank you again for your time. And just to give you an idea of what you're looking at here, this is in downtown Milwaukee where you see a number of firefighters along with detectives, police officers lining the streets, preparing for that officer to make his way to the medical examiner's office. I want to read to you, the governor has sent out a tweet saying, Kathy and I send our thoughts and sincere sympathy to the family and friends of the officer whose life was lost. The entire Milwaukee Police Department and the people of Milwaukee as they mourn this tragedy. This loss is a reminder that men and women put their lives on the line every day to protect our citizens and communities here in Wisconsin. We are grateful for their bravery and call to service. And as you can see right now, a number of men and women who have been called to serve and protect our communities day in and day out are now being called to help bring this officer home. In fact, we have talked to one person who is standing uh, ready and to watch this procession uh, let's listen in to what he has to say. What made you just come out here? Just to honor him, show my respect for him. He goes to work in the morning to help us all, tries to do good things and gets killed. That's not, that's not right. 
it's, it's, it's a tragedy. He was trying to protect us and he, he gets killed in the line of duty. That's, that's not right. And that is just some of the response we are getting uh, here into our newsroom, as well as from law enforcement across the city and across the state. This is a live picture down by the police administration building as they await for the arrival of this officer's body headed towards the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's Office. Um, I am able to see a number of other monitors mm -hmm. uh, in our newsroom here, and you can see that others are <coughs> gathering along the route because uh, they want to pay their respects. They want to be there in a show of support for the Milwaukee Police Department as they once again mourn and grieve the loss of a veteran officer, 35 years old, we're told. Uh, he joined, uh, has been there uh, for 17 years, and this is now the procession that has, begin, has begun. Let's listen in. Again, the lights are flashing, but no sirens out of respect, but recognition of the life that was lost. We do have several reporters along the route and we're going to be checking in with them. They've been uh, working this story since this morning, have been in contact with people who are aware of the situation that took place. And as it unfolded, one of those has been Katie Crowther who's down there ninth and state where the uh, American flag has been draped across two buildings there. Uh, a spectacular picture in terms of the, uh, the red, white, and blue and the mm -hmm. honor and the talk of the sacrifice of this officer. And I don't know if we're able to get to her just yet, but I mean, let's just take this in right now. This is again um, leaving Freighter Hospital and a line of cars, probably more than 50 to 100 cars in line preparing to bring this officer from Freighter Hospital downtown to the medical examiner's office. And you can see that this procession is moving slowly. Um, and, and almost even though we can't hear anything, the somber nature of this. It is certainly a very moving moment uh, for the city and the county as they watch this uh, take place. Uh, it will take some time to get downtown as they will move slowly uh, through the uh, city roads and county roads and highways to get down to the Milwaukee Police Department uh, as they uh, prepare and get ready for another funeral here for a fallen officer. As you have heard and as we have been reporting, this is the third officer to lose his life in the line of duty in about eight months and the mayor talking about that. Uh, we have a young police chief, and I mean but young in the sense of his time on the job. Uh, he's only been police chief. Oh, on chief the job as, as the police chief, chief. Yeah, yes. Certainly a veteran police officer. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this is uh, uh, something uh, that has not happened in the city of Milwaukee prior to this, uh, the last eight months that we had what seen. What chief has had to deal with three this, officers right. to um, be killed in the line of duty. And um, you may have seen earlier the absence of Chief Alfonso Morales, but not out of being remiss of what is happening. But he was out of town at a conference when he got the call that one of his officers had been shot and killed. And he is making his way back to Milwaukee as we speak to be here tonight. Um, and again, you're seeing the procession from Freighter Hospital. Kareen is on Watertown Plank Road. If you can hear us. Go ahead. Shannon, yes, I can hear you. We are uh, near the area of the hospital where all these vehicles are pulling out right now, um, led by Milwaukee County Sheriff's deputy along with Milwaukee police vehicles. That, that's all I can see from where I'm at right now uh, with their lights on. And of course, as you can imagine, a solemn time. Uh, the cars on the other side of the street, you can see are all stopped there and they have been getting out of their cars trying to figure out what's going on. Some of them pulling over a family. You can see in this shot here on the other side, a couple of kids, uh, different people climbing down hills, coming out of their offices. They have heard about this procession and wanted to be a part of it. Um, very quiet. I, I noticed a couple of people hugging over here that had just met. I'm not sure what the story is, but they clearly uh, felt moved to come out and they wanted to be part of 
this moment here. Uh, you can see some more vehicles coming in and the hearse here in the focal point right now. And of course, uh, the fallen officer is surrounded by men and women in uniform in these vehicles. I'm noticing um, a lot of these squads on the street here are filled with officers. A couple of them have maybe one or two people. There are also officers, investigators, people in the back seats of these cars as well. I like that description you gave us, Corrine, uh, the officer being protected on both sides with men and women on the force in the front and in the back. You're taking a live look here from the interstate where we are expected to see that caravan pass through. You can see that there are two first responder fire trucks there and a number of people lining that route, preparing to see that officer's hearse pass through. Getting a statement in, we had just had a conversation with Milwaukee Alderman Ashante Hamilton, who is the Milwaukee Common Council President. The council and its members have put out a statement uh, saying they grieve as well, saying we offer our heartfelt sympathies to the officer's family and to each and every member of the Milwaukee Police Department. We grieve for our fallen officer killed while working for all of us and while serving our entire city with selflessness and courage. Courage is the word that also came up from the mayor yeah, as well in terms of when you think about that type of work and what that officer was up against, knowing that they were going to be serving a search warrant, didn't know what they would find on once the they get to the inside door. and what would be on the other side of the door. Pete Servakis has been uh, watching this story closely as well from Freighter Hospital and other points along uh, this story. Pete, what have you been able to see? Well, Charles, a uh, pretty remarkable image. I'm actually, I know you just spoke to Corrine. We're just a uh, few blocks east of where she is standing. And right now what we're looking at is a line of squad cars and of police lights that stretches all the way from the ramp to the interstate um, here on Watertown Plank Road into the, the freighter complex. Uh, just car after car. Um, Kareen gave you the description already about uh, most of them being, of course, Milwaukee police to honor this fallen Milwaukee police officer, but a lot of other municipalities too. I just saw Greenfield pass by. Franklin has been here. Uh, Marquette had a couple squads. Whitefish Bay. Uh, it's important to note, I think, uh, the chaplain for Milwaukee Police has done stories with us in the past, unfortunately, after the deaths of officers Charles Irvine Jr. and Michael Mahalski over the summer. And he stressed that the law enforcement community as a whole is so tight-knit. Maybe those of us who are not a part of it might not realize how symbolic that is. But he spoke to us at the time of those other two officer deaths about how important support from other departments is to get MPD officers through something like this and, and through this procession, it's pretty apparent that that support uh, is still here and it's strong. And Pete, what about the grieving process? I mean, it is so public, so visual. Uh, different for everyone. It, exactly. And when you see, here's a picture of uh, law enforcement lining the street as well as cars along the route. Did he talk about how officers process the information? And I imagine it varies from one officer to the next. Well, I know, and again, we're referencing, um, you know, stories that we had done in the past because, unfortunately, this is not a third time within the last year we're seeing this happen to Milwaukee police. I know in the past uh, the department, the chaplain, told us that a lot of times what something like this does is it reignites that constant fear in an officer's mind of just the stark realities of the job, even if most of the time they go out, they do their job, and they come home. Um, but I think it's also important to note powerful visual here. Uh, if our ace photographer, Paul, can just move a little bit to the right. Um, we've got traffic stopped as this procession is going through, and we've seen at least two civilians that I'm looking at that have, instead of waiting in their vehicles with everyone else, and everyone here is waiting patiently for the procession to go by, uh, these two civilians are actually out of their vehicles standing watching this procession in the cold, uh, showing that that grieving process that you guys mentioned, Charles and Shannon, goes well beyond the police force. It really does hit, you know, the community at large.
a sign of respect, a sign of honor for this officer. Pete Zervakis, thank you for your perspective out in the field. Now, we've been flipping through a number of cameras because we want to show you the uh, processional route. This is on the interstate and you can see there's a couple of flashing lights. It's hard for me to see because the time frame is right there, but I believe we are waiting if we could get another view camera where we can actually see this procession so that our viewers can get an idea of just how massive the procession is with a number of uh, police cars and vehicles in this procession. I remember it looks as if there were at least 50 cars before we even saw the hearst. I, yeah, and I uh, don't even want to try to guess on the number of cars that are involved in this particular procession, but we know that it is an, uh, an enormous amount of people within the Milwaukee Police Department, as well as Pete reporting from other agencies. Here at the overpass, you can see uh, the American flag mm -hmm. as they're waiting to, and I believe uh, waiting for the procession to arrive. We talked to the, the man in the red cap there, uh, a Marine, uh, wanted to be there and express his respect. I just want to recap again um, what happened earlier this morning as we get ready to bring in a perspective from Mayor Barrett. But again, it was at around 920 this morning that an officer along with the tactical team went in to serve a search warrant on the south side of Milwaukee when he was shot and unfortunately killed in the line of duty. Listen to Mayor Barrett as he describes his feelings at this moment. This is a very, very, very difficult time for our city, for the Milwaukee Police Department, obviously for the family that's been affected. And we ask for your prayers at this time. I am filled with sorrow over this needless loss. And at the same time, I'm filled with anger at the individual who took the life of this brave police officer. He was doing his job. He was working to make our city safer. And he died. This is the third time in eight months that I've had to stand at a podium and talk about the loss of the life of a police officer. We need all residents of this community, all residents of this state, to be thankful and appreciative to every single law enforcement official in this state. He said it, but you could also feel oh, it, yeah. Charles, the mixed emotions that Mayor Barrett had, again, for having to make this announcement yet again, as he said, three times eight months. You mentioned to me he's been the mayor since 2004. This is probably the most he too has had to deal with officers dying in the city of Milwaukee and having to represent the city of Milwaukee. You're absolutely right, but he talked about the sorrow and the anger. And right now, I think that is the feeling going through a lot of people when they see here we are again, looking at a procession of an officer uh, who has lost his life in the line of duty. As we watch this procession make its way downtown, I have noticed in some of the other shots where the opposing traffic, the, mm -hmm. the going against the uh, procession, some folks have stopped and just, as you can see along there, some folks are just stopping out of respect. They're not in a rush to get home. They're not looking to like, I got to get out of here. They're saying, we've lost an officer. I'm going to stop here. Say we've a lost prayer. Life. We've lost a life. And I, I think it is a moment to pause. It is a moment to reflect. Here you see a 35 year old man, 17 years on the force, has a wife, and now she has to mourn the death of her husband, doing his job, hoping he'd come home tonight. Um, and unfortunately, he has not. And our prayers and our thoughts are with this family right now because even though they understand the responsibilities that their men and women take every day that they leave home, they pray that they come back. And when they don't, we as a community, it is very important that we as a community support them in whatever way they need. And I think that uh, I'm hoping that is the feeling they are getting right now, the support and love and respect. Uh, when you see along that route, people getting out of their cars, people flying a flag, and this, of course, the Milwaukee Fire Department flying uh, the red, white, and blue right over the downtown area between two buildings as we wait for this procession to make its way downtown. Um, 
there is also going to be a lot more after this mm -hmm. uh, in terms of preparing for a funeral. And I remember one of the moments in Officer Mahalski, the last call. The last call. When we hear that final radio traffic. And it just breaks your heart uh, to see and hear that, knowing that that number of the officer will never be called again. And uh, we know in Officer Mahalski's case that his wife and son were there for that moment uh, in that pouring rain that we saw for that uh, very large funeral. And here we are now preparing as a community, as a city, a county, and as the mayor said, a state, to think of all these officers, not just because it's a Milwaukee police officer, it's a law enforcement officer working to keep you safe. You reminded me when you spoke about the last call, um, I remember that these officers are never forgotten by their fellow colleagues. I had the opportunity um, to visit the special investigation uh, division, which is SID that Officer Mahalski was a part of. And interestingly enough, in the office, they do not disturb their desk. It remains the same. And what is even more poignant is that in the locker room, where these men and women change to prepare to go out day in and day out in and out there is still their locker the way they left it the day they left it and it is never removed and this is a reminder for these officers to understand what it is they have signed up for but also to respect and remember the officer who lost his life in the line of duty and it was very very powerful when i had the chance to see that it is uh, when you talk to these officers we get a chance to go out and do stories with them there is that bond bond that partnership that tight knit that they uh, get to know each other because they spend a lot of time you together. You gotta have my back. You got, we, we've got to be tight, you right. know? And not only that, I'm sure they're sharing stories about their families and moments when they get a chance to break away from what they do and the challenges that they face and the stress of the job, knowing that it can turn deadly at any moment here. And so that's why they share this common bond that you and I uh, don't know about because we don't face that risk, that tragedy, that life-changing moment that can happen at any particular time. And so it is always um, important at these moments when we see a community coming together, not just the mayor, not just the police chief, we've heard from the governor, we've heard from the attorney general, but those folks right there standing side by side, shoulder to shoulder, because they stand together every day to face the challenges. And they're trying to win on most occasions to make the city safer and find ways to do their job in a way that protects and serve what they signed up to do. There are people now at the Milwaukee Academy who are learning to be police officers. This day will be on their minds as well, knowing how challenging and difficult and dangerous this job is. And I think it's also important, as you mentioned, community. These officers build bridges, attempt to build bridges day in and day out in not only protecting people and property, but making sure that they can communicate in a way that they can all live together peacefully. You know, our officers take on a lot these days. They take on more than they probably did 20 years ago because they've got to deal with so many different issues when they go on a scene. But as you see right here, this is a testament to the men and women of the Milwaukee Police Department as they await one of their own to come home. And again, many of them are on were on duty and now they are here to stand, as you said, shoulder to shoulder um, in respect and an honor. And we are, uh, in case you're just joining us, uh, following the procession of a fallen officer who died this morning in the line of duty, uh, was with a team of officers, the tactical enforcement unit. They were serving a search warrant on a 26 year old man and another person as well. We know a 26 year old suspect has been taken into custody. Uh, but shots were fired, hitting one of the officers. Uh, he later died, and now we are going through this process again to see the city and the county and the state mourning the loss of life of a Milwaukee police officer. We are waiting for more details about the particular officer, and uh, we do know that this remains a fluid investigation. And as you mentioned, we have a number of reporters on the scene. I just want to ask our producers, is there any way for us to be able to get Tom, um, who is also downtown? 
still dialing in. OK, that's understandable. Um, I know that Katie is also downtown where we're seeing these images coming in to the studio as we speak, and she has been there all morning long, really taking in the sights and sounds of these officers preparing to uh, welcome and bring home one of their own. I'm not sure if she is available, but nonetheless, you can see that this procession is getting closer and closer. Katie, I know that you've seen a lot. Can you just give our viewers a little bit more perspective of what you're experiencing down there? Yeah, Shannon, I'm going to stay out of the shot and let my photographer. I mean, this really goes without any comment from me just looking at this site right now. Thousands of Milwaukee police officers, ATF agents, Milwaukee firefighters standing at attention in silence. We are right in front of the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's Office where the procession will ultimately end. They are giving a salute right now in silence, waiting for that procession to come here. It is incredibly emotional. Uh, the large American flag flying in the background where the Milwaukee firefighters have put it up. And just to see this is truly emotional. I am going to now step out, be quiet, because the cars, the procession is starting to come this way where it will end. Charles and Shannon. All right, we will um, let you go. And we will also pause here and just watch as these cars make their way through the downtown area uh, and waiting for the car carrying the body of this officer to the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's Office. Um, as we watched more and more people arrive downtown mm -hmm. um, to be there to show their support. It is a touching sight to see even as we heard for As you can see, the officers saluting. These are firefighters.
Thank you. Again, you just heard from the honor guard there releasing officers as that officer made his final way to the medical examiner's office. So the honor guard there, I'm told that a member of the honor guard will remain with the body until the funeral. Uh, it has been an emotional journey from the hospital to the medical examiner's office. You can see the streets were lined by police officers. We saw Milwaukee Fire Department, uh, members of the fire department saluting as well as there is the mayor who gave us that news conference. He is down there as well. We also have Tom Durian who's down at the scene and if we're able to connect with him, he had a better view of uh, what was happening there as well as Katie who watched all of this unfold, not only at the location 12th and Dakota where this shooting took place, but also in downtown Milwaukee. Katie? Charles, uh, the emotions out here are just so difficult. Um, you know, we were right here and as the hearse pulled up with the body of the fallen police officer, then some of his family came out of the car uh, behind it, uh, along with his wife. Uh, very emotional. Some of the members of his team are out here hugging right now. Uh, tears in their eyes, many of them crying, uh, just to see such a huge response of men in blue, Milwaukee police officers, Milwaukee firefighters, first responders of every kind, standing out here together in salute is truly just a breathtaking thing to behold. Um, it's been a very hard day. Charles, as you said, we were out there in the neighborhood when it happened, as we were trying to get more answers and uh, the feeling out here among all these uh, law enforcement agents is 
can be felt in the community as well. A lot of people in the neighborhood where it happened all day were telling me how upset and sad they were. Um, this is felt throughout the city, especially because this we just did this eight months ago, first in June with Officer Charles Irvine Jr., then in July with Officer Michael Mahulski. Now this is the third time. It's too much for any department to feel. Um, and all I can say is it's just, you know, it's very somber out here. Some of the officers are now kind of going back uh, to their cars, um, but just what a long procession it was, emotional, silent. I mean, you could hear a pin drop out here. That's how silent it was to honor this officer. Um, so I will send it back out to you guys. But as you can see, just by the video that you're seeing right now, um, they're really trying to support each other at this time. A lot of hugs, a lot of handshakes, a lot of hand holding, because that is how they are going to get through this together. All right, Katie, appreciate that. It is heartbreaking to see strong men and women crack under this pressure. But again, as you mentioned, in the last eight months, they've had to deal with this now three times. Tom Durian, again, has also been downtown in Milwaukee, seeing this procession and seeing the just overflow of support from not only officers, but from the community. Tom. Yeah, Shannon, we're watching right now as the uh, police officers, sheriff's deputies, district attorneys, all that work in this building here that work together along with the firefighters are coming down the street, 9th Street here from the medical examiner's office where you saw Katie. Uh, the feeling of, of, of emotion, it, it's palpable here. Um, I stood on the same street when Officer Mahalski's funeral procession went by the Milwaukee Police Headquarters and that salute that you saw the officers do as the hearse went by here, there you could have heard a pin drop here as that hearse went by, just the roar of the engines of the vehicles of the fire trucks and the police vehicles that were following in that procession was all you could hear and the gentle wind that was blowing through here on this very cold day in February. Right now, many of the police officers are headed back to district headquarters, back to work. As you know, many of them are on duty right now. They came outside to pay their respects. Also in situations like this, we've talked about it a little bit, but police officers will come from home in their police vehicles and their personal vehicles to make sure there is a show of support for the officers here. I can see officers across the street right now hugging each other and embracing. As uh, Katie mentioned, as you guys have mentioned, this has happened so many times in the last eight months. When I first got here to the uh, corner, I went up to a police officer and, and I could just feel by talking to him that you know, the shock of being here once again in this same location, blocking off streets for another officer's funeral. I did see a firefighter that was standing in front of our camera position when you were watching the hearse and the uh, procession go by. He was saluting as the hearse went by and tears were coming down his face and he never moved that salute to wipe the tears from his eyes until he was told to be at ease by the fire department assistant chief Lipsky who's out here but as you can see they are going back to the offices they are coming back down the street uh, the honor guard from the uh, medical examiner's office where you saw Katie's picture there and many of these officers will go back to work and now they will begin the process of planning a funeral for this officer once again we'll send it back inside to you a tough day definitely for the men and women of the Milwaukee Police Department and the men and women of this community. Heavy hearts again for Milwaukee as it mourns a fallen officer. The American flag there is a reminder of the sacrifice and the service that so many in law enforcement make and how this community feels about this particular, off this particular officer. We will continue to follow this story and we'll have much more for you coming up at Live at Four.